Okay guys, Swiss Mois Delani Python Dinada Sana. You welcome to this session. And in this session, we're going to cover how you can deploy machine learning model in React.js. So the front end is React.js 18 and the back end is Django 4. So actual in this session, I'll not cover everything from the scratch, like how you can create a React.js application, how you can create a Django application, and how you can create a machine learning model. I assume that you already know React.js and you already know Django. So you are actually a full stack web developer who has been working with React.js on the front end and Django on the back end. But also I assume you have a full knowledge of supervised machine learning and you are capable of creating the model. So those are the three requirements for you to take this video. React.js, Django, and the machine learning. Unless otherwise you will struggle, but you should not care about it because maybe you want to be a machine learning uh, engineer who is actually learning how to deploy machine learning model on React.js. So let me show you something here. Uh, in previous years, I lectured how you can create a comment, YouTube comment prediction. The idea was actually to be able to predict if the comment is spam or harm. Okay. And this is actual our data set loaded with uh, pandas read underscore CSV. So this is the content. Uh, our machine learning model takes takes in to process. Then after this is the output. So it predicts. So the cross if one means the comment is spam, but if is the cross is zero, then the comment is harm. Okay. So it was very simple uh, and a straightforward tutorial. And we deployed a model on a flask, okay? That was by the time. And I am very sure by the time I has, I had not yet started to lecture how to create a full stack web application by using React.js and Vue.js. So far, we know about React.js. So let's jump in and try out how we can deploy uh, this machine learning model on React.js, okay? So this was a, just a bigger picture. And here, um, let me show you something more. I actually dumped the vectorizer and a model by using Pico, okay? So that's okay. So this is actually what you needed to expect at the end of this course. You'll be able to create a simple React.js web application, okay, which takes in a comment, predict, and returns a result. So let's try out. Let me say the comment is nice, right? When I predict, you can see ML classifies comment as a spam, okay? And this is true. I don't know why, but YouTube algorithm uh, and the Google algorithm classifies nice as spam comment. I don't know why, uh, but this, there is another comment which YouTube algorithm classify it, classifies it as uh, spam. For example, sabu for sabu, sabu for sabu, sabu for sabu, okay. It is a spam, okay? So let us try out it to uh, uh, give in a comment of which we think it might not be spam. Let me say uh, this video is enjoyable. Is uh, This video is enjoyable 
I like the content. I like the content. Okay. So when you click here, you can see her ML crossfires uh, comment as not spam. So this is actual what you need to expect at the very end of this course. Okay. I can quickly show you what is running on the front end and what is actual running in the back end. So here in front end, we actual uh, use Axios and the form data to take user comment and uh, submit it to the back end API. Okay, so this is our API. And what is actually happening in the back end, in the back end, okay? As you can see here, we receive the comment from form data. We load our model, we load our vectorizer, we make a prediction. And here is a very simple check. If result is equal to zero, not spam, else spam. Okay, so the so this is actual the magic behind the, the thing. So I'll actual, I'm, 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 I'm actually going to create everything from the scratch, okay? Let me show you something here. What we actually needed to do here, I'm actually going to remove everything from here, okay? Let me remove this button. So as we start everything from the scratch, and you will be getting the idea. Let me remove Okay. Let me remove this. So let me remove this. I'm going to remove everything. So we write these things together. Okay. Let me see if we still encounter any error. That's cool on the front end. Let us inspect it. Clear this. So when I click here, you can see nothing happens. Okay. So let's start with the front end part, okay? And as I've told you that we are, we are using Axios, okay? And Axios is already installed. So if you have not installed Axios, I recommend you install Axios. And I can show you the version of Axios is uh, 27.2. The version of ReactJS is 18.1.0, but if you need this source code, no worries, I'll push the source code to my GitHub repo and I'll be able to actually download the source code. Okay, let's start to implement, uh, hmm. let's start to actually correct the information from our text area. Uh, here, as you can see, I've imported use state because it will help us to deal with forms. And uh, here I have actually imported Axios because it will help us to submit the form. That's perfect. So let us create, a, uh, let's create a function, let me say, this is uh, const prediction. No, let me say predict button be it n. So this is uh, arrow function. If you are familiar with arrow function in JavaScript, I think this something this something not new for you. So here we can say console.log button click the button click the okay. Right, let's go here on our button um, and say on click, on click.
So on click is predictbit and that's perfect. That's the first step to see if we are able to listen to the event. So when I click here, you can see button. We, uh, we could actually modify the message. So as it uh, actually can say button quickly, but uh, I am very sure that you know how to submit the form, but uh, let's do it together, okay? So you can see button quickly. That's perfect. Let us use use state hooks. Uh, let's say const. Can say uh, const. Can say comment. Perfect. And here let's say set comment. Okay, is equal to use state hook. Okay, should be something like this. That's perfect. So let's come here and uh, value should be a comment. Perfect. Uh, the value should be comment. On change. On change. Okay, we need it actually to specify. Uh, we need it actually to use set comment to get the value of text earlier and store it in our user state variable with the name comment. Okay, what you can actually do here, say something like this. Okay, set comment. Then e dot target dot value. E dot target dot value. That's cool. Okay. So this is actually how you can capture the value of your input from and uh, by using. Uh, Use state in React.js. So this is just a function which takes a value, okay, and I store it in uh, comment. That's perfect. Let's try out to see if we are able to uh, console.log. Let's see if we are able to capture the value of text earlier. So say comment so when we come here and uh, let me say hi mose you can't see anything what's happening yeah uh, let's say hi hello mose perfect you can see hi mose that's cool. So I've actually forgotten to tell you uh, our, our Django web application is running on Anaconda prompt. Uh, that's, I already know the task of installing uh, machine learning, SK learning packages. So what I did was actually to create, to install Django on Anaconda by using Anaconda prompt. I installed in my SQL Crunch, I, I installed it, course headers, and so on. So I'm using Anaconda. So if you want to go along with me, you can also install the last, the latest version of Anaconda, install Node, install React.js, and so on. This is something very simple, but it is compressed with a lot of dependence and a lot of knowledge. So let's get back here. Those are the just stories. So uh, we are we are actually have seen that we are able to get the comment from user. So the next thing to do here is to use form data. Okay, with the help of form data, we should be able to take. Um, 
to take the comment and send it to the backend, submit to uh, the Django backend. So here I'll set the default headers by using Axios, okay, default dot headers dot common that's perfect I actually need to say content type content type or oh, application slash json it should say application application slash json that's perfect we can actually copy this control c okay can say here let's say accept i am very sure that you are enjoying this section uh, that's cool because you're full you're full stack web developer but it's still your machine learning engineer how lucky you are let's get things ready so let's say axios uh, dot posty so if you're not familiar with axios you just say axios dot posty posty stands for mo uh, for method we are actually using posty method to send data to the back end okay something like this here you specify the url path okay i'll go to the django back end and i'll show you the urls okay you can see the the url is at the root of our application so our url api is here don't worry about the error displayed i'll, I'll, I'll actually show you what's what is happening there so that's so that is our url of our api endpoint as i told you that we're actually going to use from data so uh let, let us declare from data okay here we can say uh from data is you can say const uh, this is equal to new from data from data something like this perfect then after we should say form data dot append we append to our form data put bracket this is the name of i mean when you're sending something to the backend with post method every value should have a name for example you are sending a comment that is a value what is the name of the comment so we usually say comment put comment okay like here the this is actually the name of something we are sending to the back end and this is the value the value is comment okay but here you can change you can say uh the value is comments something like this i want to make this clear so this is the name this is the value okay let me roll back things so i hope you get the bigger picture so what we actual what we have actually done here is to take the comment store it in the form data okay and if you want to be sure that your form data is already populated with data there is a way to inspect the content of form data and that was my previous tutorial so you can kindly check out on my youtube channel how you can actually inspect the form data to see if you are submitting the form data with empty data or you are submitting the form data with something inside so that's cool I, I think i'm talking too much but you don't worry check out that video okay so what is this happening okay so here we are actually um, specifying the form data 
okay this is the form that we are sending to the back end okay after that uh, we start uh, javascript promise so we can say dot then okay dot then mm. add more bracket let me say uh response that's cool response uh something like this here we can console dot log okay let us just console log the response okay but let us try out to catch if there is something wrong we should actually be able to capture it and display it by using a console this is cool right uh, something like this so let me say console.log but during the deployment of your react.js application make sure you remove this comment console.log console.log because you will actually be confusing your end user of your web application so after writing this code snippet we should be able to submit the form I don't care about the backend error. What will so let's say hi guys, hi guys. Let's say this is our it's our YouTube comment. When I hit here, of okay, no worry. So we are done with the part number one, which is uh, taking the comment from the front end and sending it to the back end so let us come here on the back end okay and here what i'm actually going to do here i'm going to remove everything from here so as we write these things together okay What is this happening? I think uh, 360 antivirus is trying to mess up with my videos. So let's. So what's happening when I come here and I refresh? You can see we get the lizard. Okay. That's cool. And if we send here the request to the backend you should be expecting something uh you can see there is result okay uh first of all we needed to import this okay import job lib import pico and import CSRF exempt you can also import this from ja for, from the django.http import http response comma json response so here as i've told you that we are you are you have actually seen on the front end that we are using post method we are actually using axios post method and the form data to submit the request to the back end so here is how you can receive something from the front end. Uh, so here what we can say, uh, we can say comment is equal to requesty.posty requesty.posty dot get comment make sure the name you put here okay the name you put here on your form data unless otherwise you'll be messing up and it will take you longer to actually debug your source code 
So here, and uh, let's see if we are able to print out uh, the comment received from front end uh, in our Django backend application. Okay, now let's be serious and uh, I'm going to put serious comment. Let me say nice video. Okay, so when I, I click submit here, let's see in our back end you can see nice video so far so nice we actually have managed it to make react js and the django application communicate okay you can see we send the request we receive the request and we return the response to our front end web application that's cool so the next thing we are actually going to do here is let us load um, our model and a vectorizer, okay? So here I can say loaded model of loaded model. So let us use pico.load. Then it should be model this is actual the path classification dot model then read it by now okay we are reading and we're not writing okay so this is actually how you can load your model by using pico i can take you back to our jupyter notebook um this is actually how to write uh, Hmm. Let me, I want to show you how to write a model to the back end. Okay, I can show you here. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I don't see. So, this is how to open the model. Okay, never mind. But this is how you how to dump something in the back end. Um, in your disk, local disk by using pico. Nice uh, pico.dump, then the name of a file you want to dump, and so on. So when we dump, we use rb, wb, because that is right binary. And when you are loading the model, we use rb, that is read binary. Okay, so far we have actually managed to load our model. And I can show you uh, where is our model. Open up this folder, you can see there is classification.model, okay? So I'll, I think I'll provide all these resources so as you'll have no the task of building the model from the scratch. What you'll actually be doing is just uh, copying and pasting. So here, let me, let, let's say this is loaded vectorizer okay vectorizer and the name of uh, is vectorizer.pico you can choose any extension you want that's something amazing about using pico in machine learning that's cool okay okay that's cool So what we actually want to do here, let's say result, we want to predict. So we are using loaded model. Okay, dot predict. Bracket loaded vectorizer. Dot transform. Transform. We put bracket, square bracket, comment, okay, zero. So let us print out uh, the result. That's perfect. Okay, let's say uh, 
our comment remains the same nice video click here you can see there is internal server error what is happening of model classification dot model read binary okay think there is something wrong okay here after loading we needed to uh, we needed to use open okay after loading there is open So let us submit. You can see that everything is fine. And uh, you can see the result is zero. That's perfect. We are now able to take the comment from the front end, receive it in the back end process, and uh, get the result. So the next thing we actually needed to do here. Okay, let's say result. <clears throat> That's cool. And here we can say if result is equal to zero. But zero as a string because here we have actually converted the integer to string. I hope you get the concept. So result, uh, let me say if we zero means not spam. That's cool. Else, the comment should be spam. Okay because we have only two class for making prediction, okay? So this is, uh, so, this is not actually much class problem in supervised machine learning. I failed to talk clear because it has been a very long time not dealing with machine learning, okay? And here, let's put the result here. That's amazing. We're getting there. So that's cool. Don't forget to use a CSLF exempt at the very top of your Django view. So let us clear this. Let me say submit. Okay. So you can see data result not spam okay what is what if we say nice only nice okay oh you can see spam so how to get the result returned from um from our django backend and display it to the end user okay uh, so what if I say uh, dot data dot result? Okay. Mm -hmm. You can see spam. That's cool. So what we actually needed to do here, let us use um, React hooks. That is use state hook. Let us copy this. And paste it here and here let's say this is result result and here let us say this is set result that is perfect so what we're actually going to do here is as I've, as i told you that i don't recommend the use of console.log when you are actually taking your web application to the production okay so we need 
set result. So here, what we can say, we can say set result. Okay, bracket. Let us get something. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to mess with things up. Let me just copy this. I know if I if I if I'll use Control X shortcut, I'll actually stop recording this video. Okay, so that's cool. So what uh, use is that set lizard does is actually taking the lizard and the store here in lizard. So let us display uh, the result below user form. You can say ML cross files, cross files, comment as. So let us say this is result. That's perfect. Okay, let us refresh here. So when it, when we say nice, you can see ML classify the comment as spam. But when you say nice video, click, you can see ML classifies comment as not spam. Let us make some changes here. Let us do something called the conditional rendering in React.js. If you have not came across this, something beautiful. Okay. So that's cool. As I've told you that I don't want to mess with microphone. I know there is shortcut if I'll use here. I'll actually terminate the recording of this video. So if there is a lizard display, else now, let's come here. We actually done. Okay. And I, if I refresh now, I'll get an error. That's cool. So let us delete everything here. Let's say nice video. You can see ML cross files comment as not spam. So now we don't need it to console log and whatever. What if I say nice? Spam. Let me take one of comment here. Okay, let me just copy this. The comment is not well clear but I hope it will be classified oh as you spam that's cool and here the cross is spam as I told you that one stands for spam and a zero for harm okay let me say the comment is and when I try this, make sure you put down in the comment, okay? Let me say, uh, great video, Mr. Moses. Not spam. So actually, this sum up the end of this course on how you can deploy machine learning model on React.js. I'm still thinking, uh, I think I need to prepare another tutorial on how you can deploy machine learning model in a PHP. I think those who are doing machine learning, uh, but their native web application language is PHP. I think they are really struggling how they can shift it to Django so as they can have, they can, they can be flexible when it comes to model deployment. Don't worry, keep on coding on your native web framework or your php i'll cover how you can deploy a machine learning model in php i'll try out how to deploy in react uh, jesus 
how to deploy in Vue.js. So before things, before giving my thanks in approximately eight international language, of course, in this session, uh, we, at, the, at the beginning, we planned to lecture this session with my girlfriend, uh, but uh, something uh, very disappointing, she's still sleeping. So she, she was actually not be able to participate in this video. But I think in the next session, she'll be able to lecture you about the different concept in Python, web scrapping, and whatever. So I think I'm talking too much. <laughs> Let me thank you in eight different international language. Asante sana. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Muchas gracias. Muito obrigado. Kamza Hamida. Aita Danke. Keep on watching, guys. See you next time.